Come with me to Shimoku Dazawa. It's a cute little neighborhood known for its vintage dish shops, and I'm so happy I finally got to visit. We started off our day at Mika Shimokita, which is a brand new commercial complex that just opened back in April. It's right by the train station, so it won't be hard to miss. They have this amazing international street food corridor with various food stalls like Thai chicken rice and bun mi. Unfortunately, we had other food plans, so we didn't get to try some of the restaurants this time around. But once you get to the end of the corridor, you'll find Tatsuya Bookstore. Now, if you've been to a Japanese bookstore before, you'll know they literally have everything. They have all of the mangas and magazines that you can imagine, to stationery and even skincare. There's even a shared lounge with all the equipment you'll need to work or study in. The first vintage shop we went to was the Shimokita Garage Department, which was right around the corner of Mika Shimokita. It had a flea market type of layout with various vendors. There's a huge sale rack right when you walk in with some cool pieces like this champion crew neck for under $9. Each vendor had their own specialty like this one with vintage tees. There's even a section with handmade jewelry. I didn't end up getting anything but it was really cool to look at all of the unique pieces that they had to offer. Next we headed over to 2nd street. This one is probably one of the more popular mainstream ones since they also have locations pretty much all over Japan and even New York. The Shimoki Dazawa location has a lot more luxury goods like vintage designer handbags and shoes which were all displayed on the first floor. But the second floor is where you can find all of the streetwear and more casual everyday pieces. I was really tempted to get a few pieces but since we just started shopping I held myself back. Next we stumbled upon these dust shops on the second floor of this building called Crystal Vessel. We first went into Pixie which had a bit of bargains. They had a bunch of things on sale for 80% off and they were also doing a buy to get 20% off promo while we were there. To be honest, majority of the selections were graphic crewnecks and outerwear. Not sure if it's because it was late November but they definitely had a lot of crewnecks. Outside in the 80% off bins were a lot of brand name hoodies like Fila and Nike which were roughly around $25 US originally and would have been around $5. Across the hall was FUV or FUV, not sure how to pronounce that. They were in the middle of restocking so we didn't get to go inside but they did have a 100 yen rack with some knits and shirts which was honestly a steal for under a dollar. I did google them after the fact and they do have some raving reviews on google so I'm definitely gonna go check it out next time I'm here. Afterwards we took a quick lunch break at Stabler. They specialize in these amazing meat sando stuffed with steak. Just look at that. If you're looking for a quick spot to fill your tummy, I highly recommend. They're so good and I still dream about this me sandal every single day. After lunch, we stumbled upon Village Vanguard and even though this technically isn't a thrift shop, they literally have everything you can think of and definitely a great change of pace looking at things other than clothes. They literally packed the store with everything from plushies to random gadgets that you never thought you needed. It's honestly a blast walking through the store. Alright, back to thrifting, we headed to Anchor next. Everything here was separated by brand and super organized, so it makes it super easy if you're looking for something from a specific brand. Since they have more of a curated selection of brands, price point is a bit higher, but they do have some rare pieces like this polo bear knit sweater that I haven't seen in any other shops. Right next to Anchor is Shizuko. Honestly, I think it might have been a grizzly pop-up since all of the tags had a grizzly logo, and they have locations all over Shimokutazawa, so they all have similar stuff. They're definitely more streetwear focused with a lot more one-of-a-kind pieces like these printed shirts. They even have a basement at this location where you can find all of their outerwear. And then we headed to Chicago. They have another location in Harajuku and just based on the merchandising of the whole store, you can probably already tell it's very streetwear focused. They do have more of a curated selection with quite a bit of name brands. You'll really have to spend some time here to really dig and see if there's any hidden gems. Even though they had a lot of stock, everything was super organized. Just look at how perfectly color coded this rack of jeans are. They also organized some of their stuff by brand like this Burberry section with a full rack of Burberry scarves. Depending on condition, prices varied a bit for each scarf but they were all roughly around $70. And then we finally made our way to Kinji, which also have locations all over Japan and it's one of the bigger thrift shops we went to. They have a huge selection, literally endless amount of knits. Prices wise was definitely on the higher side compared to some of the other stores here in Shimokitazawa, but they definitely have more 
of your vintage antique pieces that you wouldn't find anywhere else. I really wanted this sweater which was 100% wool and handmade but it was really heavy and I was scared we didn't have the luggage space for it so I passed on it. Finally, the last thrift shop that we went to and the only shop that I actually bought something this time around was Savers. It's a pretty small shop but they have a pretty unique operating system with color coded price tags and depending on the day a certain color would go on sale for 50% off. They were also running an additional promo where if you buy any three pieces all the items would be 50% off so of course, I had to take advantage of it. The first item I got was this Burberry jacket. It was a little under $40 for after the promo. I love how lightweight and casual it is. And then I also got this wool sweater, which is such a unique piece and handmade in Uruguay. It was around $30, US which I thought was a steal because something like this probably would retail for around 100 US dollars in New York. And the last item I got was this cute little kunak. And honestly, after seeing all of the kunaks in all of the other vintage shops, I think I was pretty much influenced to get one myself. I've been obsessed with the color green lately and thought this was a pretty cute shade and it has such a cute cozy print on it. So for under $10, I decided to get it. And to wrap up our day, we ended our day at the newly opened Reload. It opened last June and they have a lot of unique artisanal boutiques, studios, and even an event space. It's a great place to get a change of pace and some coffee, but honestly, other than that, there wasn't too much to do there. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hope this was helpful, and please let me know if you end up visiting any of these thrift shops. I'll be uploading a lot more Tokyo content over the next few weeks, so make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.